Day one of the new term with parents complaining of exorbitant fees. Garissa University reopens, but is the security of students assured? And Wiper Party now threatens to expel Machakos Governor Alfred Mutua. Welcome to the program. Class 1 enrollment kicked off across the country with different schools registering varying trends in the numbers of pupils enrolled. At the Moy Avenue Primary School in Nairobi, for instance, only seven pupils had been registered by 10 a.m. Monday morning, while at the Olympics Primary School in Kibera, over 300 pupils had been enrolled by the same time. The slow enrollment among most schools in Nairobi was blamed on the morning drizzle experienced in the city, while some school heads say the enrollment is likely to pick up by the end of the week. There are those who are coming to our school the first time. Uh, the reception in my office here, because that's where they start from. I try to be as friendly as possible by asking them their names, I ask them where the free school they have been. Yeah, and from here, when they go to the class, uh, the class teacher is somebody who has, who has been teaching class one even last year. So she'll also welcome them there. It's always a challenge because some children are good, others are very weak, and we want to go with the same pace. So that has always been a challenge because I've been in standard one for the last six years. So it has not been easy for me. And as class one pupils had their first feel of school, parents and guardians were busy in banks paying school fees as the new term begins. And with textbook prices up and most schools not following the Ministry of Education guidelines on fees payments, most of them complained of the exorbitant fees being charged in schools. tunataka wapunguze hiyo pesa wameogesa kutoka kama elfu kumi juu afadhali wagetuwekea at least hata kama ni ngiribiri juu ni kitu watu kwa tumejipanga tu, tunataka tu tusaidiwe ningetaka serikali ichukue hatua uh, iwe na streamlining ya walimu wote ambao wako kwenye shule ili wajadiliane vizuri wasinje wakagadamiza wazazi juu kuna shinda hata huku mashinani Juwata zile pesa ambazo ziko kwa account, uh, kwa account, kwa account, hasifiki kwenye mashinani, uh, wa hivyo waangalie vizuri na washukue hiyo baden kama ni ya serikari. Sisi watu wadogo, so najua tutakuwa na mashida. Juhu sasa maskulu zinayo, saa itakuwa hai sana. Juhu sasa unajua kibalua nayo, itakuwa na mashida. Tukiogezo kitu kama mshahara watoto wanaweza wanaweza soma lakini school fees nayo kikuwa hai saa atujui sasa tutafanya saa tusaidie na serikali The Garissa University College is set to reopen today, nine months after a deadly terror attack left 148 people, mainly students, dead. Last month, the university recalled its academic staff in Moy University, Eldoret. The university college was shut after the April 2nd attack by Somali-based militant group Al-Shabaab. Survivors, who are mostly non-locals, were transferred to the parent institution, the Moy University in Eldoret, to continue with their education. Lectures are expected to begin next week after the official reopening of the college and a college academic board meeting is set for today. Self-sponsored students who have been out of the university since its attack are required to report back on Wednesday.
Pacha kuja bwana kuja. Bos 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 ende. Bari kon nini. Right, we're joined in studio now by Mr. Delano Kili Longwe, a security analyst, to help us discuss this issue of the reopening of Garissa University. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for joining us in studio this afternoon. So okay. let's begin. It's been nine months since the deadly terror attack. 148 people, mostly students, lost their lives. Is it too soon for the government to reopen Garissa University? It's not too soon. Actually, Michelle, what happens is the amount of time that you take to reopen an institution that has had a major incident mm -hmm. is actually determined by the factors surrounding the security of the institution. Mm -hmm. And you'll find in places like Israel, where they are under constant attack, that they normally reopen uh, institutions or organizations within a rather short period of time. Mm -hmm. What this does mean is that the government is confident in the fact that it will be able to secure its citizens, both the students and the staff at Garissa University College. Right. Now, having mentioned that, what measures has the government put in to ensure that the safety of the students is secured? Well, I can't speak on behalf of government, mm -hmm. but we are aware that there's currently a police post, an entire police post that has been put in into the institution, mm -hmm. which means that you have about 25 police officers that are permanently based over there, mm -hmm. uh, which does mean that Garissa University College is currently probably the most secure university in the entire country because wow. we don't have that trend in any other university. Uh, at the same time, of course, we need to highlight that all universities need to take steps to make sure that they are improving and increasing in terms of their security. Right. Now, I understand that the dean of Garissa University refused to go back. He actually resigned. So this is not a very good um, look, especially to the students. And the faculty and the lecturers expected to go back. Did he resign because of the security situation? Well, first, you have to remember that even though he's a dean, he's still a human being. Mm -hmm. And human beings going through any, fa any form of trauma may not be able to be the same person that they were before the incident. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, he's decided decided uh, of his own accord that he will not be able to actually carry out his activities mm -hmm. and he's perfectly entitled to be at peace with himself and uh, as such probably that's the main reason why he's resigned. Now if, if that were not the case, uh, you know, if there was no trauma, probably he would be right back there. But the trauma from a security incident, uh, you know, it can leave lifelong scars. It does take a very long time to heal sometimes. Mm -hmm. And in his particular case, he's perfectly entitled to resign. So does that mean that the students and the faculty did not undergo any psychological um, support after the attack? They have been going through various levels of support in mm -hmm. many different directions. Uh, my understanding is that all the students who were previously enrolled at Garissa University have been moved to the constituent college which they come from, mm -hmm. which is Moy University mm -hmm. in Eldoret. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in November, we did see th actually the French government coming forth and providing sponsorship for up to 109 students. Mm -hmm. So they are receiving support there. They're not being forced to go back. I think really the, op the university is opening and it's opening its doors and saying it's welcoming uh, university students from within the region and people who are willing to step into the university and continue education. One of the most important things about security and especially post-terror attacks in terms of the timing is that you should as early as possible continue with business as usual. Mm -hmm. It should not be a permanent scar in the nation because that's what the terrorists want to achieve. They mm -hmm. want to achieve the fact that they have shut down an institution or they have stopped the normal operations of a country. And it's important that the country does step forward and does reopen the university with the correct security measures in place and, and uh, put a very strong footing. Again, what's very important is that the mental awareness of every single student, staff member has to be very high. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to have a lot of mental strength to be able to carry out the education within the institution. But they also need to be taken through constant security awareness and security drills. Uh, every university, not just Garissa, in this country, should have a security plan. Mm -hmm. That plan should be with the nearest OCS or OCPD so that they can receive any form of support that they would require. Again, many times when we look into things, we find that actually some of our educational institutions don't even have a vetted security plan for 2016. Mm -hmm. 
and they don't inform, uh, for example, security officers or operations in terms of increase in student population. You've just talked about uh, the number of students that have em enrolled at a, a primary school in Nairobi. Uh, is the nearest security uh, police station uh, aware of how many more students, mm -hmm. for example, if anything were to happen, and now in this particular facility, we have to ask these questions, Michelle. Right. And uh, I understand that some students from Garissa University were entrenched into the Moy University in Eldred, but some of them will be um, voluntary, of course, uh, going back to the Garissa University. Is it a good idea to have these same students who witnessed that attack go back, or should the Garissa University administration now start a fresh enrollment? If the student is willing, if that particular student feels like, for whatever reason, they have the mental resolve mm -hmm. to go back to an institution mm -hmm. which they know was attacked, which they know that their fellow students uh, lost their lives in, and they have that mental strength, it is a good show of confidence, of force, and of fearlessness, mm -hmm. and that type of character should be encouraged. Absolutely. It absolutely should be encouraged, mm -hmm. and it does show that Garissa will rise from the ashes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, um, some of the survivors of the attack in April, of course, said that uh, the attackers were discriminating on the basis of religion. So now that the, the university has been reopened. Do we expect to see any Christian students go back to the school or is there still that fear that um, if there's a terror attack next uh, I will be killed because I'm Christian? I think firstly what we, one of the things we have to remember is there's a particular reason why people are selecting Garissa University. Mm -hmm. It's either because they can't afford to pay more for a uh, more expensive institution or geographical displacement mm -hmm. or simply other factors that come into play. So if students are going to go back, uh, we don't expect to see any real difference, any very major differences. Mm -hmm. And remember, there are other universities, not only in Garissa, but also within the near region, Dadab, for example, you have Kenyatta University. And these uh, university and educational institutions do not discriminate based on religion. Mm -hmm. So we don't expect to see any bias. We do expect to see some impact in terms of going back to life as normal. Mm -hmm. It will take some time for all the, the physical as well as the mental wounds to heal, but we don't expect to see a very big bias as to, you know, am I Muslim or am I Christian? Mm -hmm. We expect that any Kenyan citizen who is secured will go back there. Uh, take, for example, Westgate. Mm -hmm. uh, people going to shop in Westgate, shopping mall at the Nakumat there, don't discriminate between, you know, am I this or am I that? Mm -hmm. They had the exact same situation. Mm -hmm. Everybody and any Kenyan citizen should be able to enroll at Garissa University if they feel like they have the confidence to go through the education in that institution. Right. Now you mentioned that there is a police post that has been put up um, near the Garissa University and this is just to wrap up but we have had several terror attacks in the northeastern region so will this really make students safe and secure thinking you know I'm going back to the, the Garissa University in the northeastern region and although, although there has not been an attack um, near the, the university there has been attacks uh, no, around the surrounding areas in the university. So our recommendations actually to government are that this is a continual uh, strategic initiative to improve security, not just for the entire northeastern region, mm -hmm. but for educational institutions such as Garissa. There's more to be done. There's a lot of work to be done. It, it, it encompasses a very wide scope, mm -hmm. including physical security. Mm -hmm. Right now, Garissa University, for example, should have bomb-proof gates. Mm -hmm. It should have bulletproof windows. It should have uh, bulletproof guard houses and in de various places within the university. So we are encouraging governments to uptake some of the measures of physical security that will be important to impede or even thwart an attack if an attempt is made again on the institution. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we do have technology. So we are encouraging, especially in places that are prone to attack, that we have more surveillance. We should not only be seeing surveillance for Nairobi and Mombasa. We should be seeing surveillance across the country. For every citizen of Kenya, we should be seeing a benefit from taxes that drives directly into security across the country. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Delano Kili Longwe. There is a security analyst speaking to us about the uh, reopening of the Garissa University nine months after the deadly terror attack of April 2nd. The university is reopening today and lectures are expected to begin next week. 
All right, let's move on now. The Amani National Congress, ANC, has asked the leadership of the Jubilee Alliance and Cord to stop spreading dirty propaganda about the party. ANC's Secretary General Godfrey Osotsi says the Jubilee Party of Kenya is yet to be registered and it is misleading for a section of politicians from Western Kenya to claim they have defected from Jubilee. Osotsi says the ANC party leader, Musalia Mudavadi, will contest for the presidency in the 2017 general elections and asked the Jubilee and Cord to brace for a tough battle ahead. The latest information we have from the Registrar of Political Parties is that the Jubilee Party of Kenya is not among the registered parties of this country. So those defecting from whichever party they are defecting to are defecting to a party that is not registered and that is illegal in law. They have employed tactics used in the past by the YK-92 and it's no surprise that the deputy president who is the only remaining senior member of the YK-92 operative still in high government office was the one executing that tired trick of buying supporters. ANC is not seeking to remove Raila Odinga from power but ANC is seeking to remove Uhuru Kenyatta from power in 2017. For barely two days after Machakos governor Dr. Alfred Mutua launched his Maendeleo Chap Chap movement, WIPA leaders have condemned Mutua's move, which they have termed as a move against the Political Parties Act and a scheme to scuttle Ukambani votes. They are now threatening to institute a process that may see Dr. Alfred Mutua being kicked out of the party. Najma Ismail with the details. Mandeleo Chap Chap movement is a national movement. Dr. Alfred Mutua's move has not gone down well with WIPA leaders. Just hours after his colorful launch at the Machakos Kenyatta Stadium, the leaders came out guns blazing and threw their weight behind WIPA leader Kalonzo Musioka in condemning the new movement. Uh, legal procedures. Kama mutu ameanza chama chake. Hakuna Aja awe kwa chama chetu, lasima atolewe kisheria. Aende na kikundi chake. Speaking in Kibwezi, the leaders who included Senator Judith Sijeni, MPs Dr. Susan Musioka, Rose Museo, among others, said Dr. Mutua had defied the party. Katika county ya machakos tumesimama imara, Tuko nyuma ya our party leader, mwishimua Kalonzo Musioka, na chama chetu ni waipa. Na hata hapa masongeleni, chama ni waipa. Yule ambaye na yumba yumba, anjue ya kwamba anatembea, ana yumba yumba peke yake. Watu wa machakos ni watu wa waipa. 81% waipa, waipa damu. Yeye yeah, anafanya kazi na wawili. Eight of them, he cannot cooperate with them. Sasa, iyo ni wongozi ama ni kubalaani ya chode. The agitated leaders said the successful devolution in the county was as a result of the new constitution and thus no individual should pretend to be a champion of the development where he's using public money. They assured the WIPA leader that the region is solidly behind him. Najma Ismail, KTN News. <laughs> Let's go over to sports news now. The first stage of the 2016 Dakar rally was cancelled on Sunday due to extreme weather on course one day after the prologue had to be abandoned when a car hit the crowd and injured at least 10 spectators. Thunderstorms and extremely thick clouds kept aircrafts grounded, making it impossible for them to guarantee the safety of the competitors. As a result, race director Etienne Lavigne decided to cancel the stage. The competitors, including cars, motorcycles and trucks, headed to the end of the stage Villa Carlos Paz under link section rules after this, the decision was announced.
And that story brings us to a close on KTN Home Channel. But news just continues on KTN News after the break.